talk. So uh, in the next talk, uh, Tori Rudolph will, will give his second talk. So he is going to talk about an unholy trinity. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so this was uh, a joint work with uh, Marco Aldi and Silva Caribbean. And uh, yeah, so we talk about TFMP, business theorem, and the quantum satisfiability problem. Okay, so. Uh, Let me introduce the quantum satisfiability problem yet again. So in this uh, work, we sort of view it slightly differently. So again, we have our Hamiltonian on n qubits, but now we regard every uh, constraint as a one local, as a rank one uh, local projector. So we have here a sum over these uh, one local projectors, uh, phi i, and each, uh, one, each uh, constraint is si local. And yeah, so it acts on this subset of qubits. And uh, the problem is uh, to check does there exist a state uh, such as h times phi zero or a common ground state. And so for this to hold, uh, Psi must satisfy all constraints. So this uh, equation here must be uh, satisfied. And uh, specifically, we are interested in uh, the product satisfiability problem. So the setup is the same as before. But uh, now we ask, does there exist a product, say Psi, which is a tensor product across all qubits, uh, such that all the constraints are satisfied on their support. So here for constraint phi i, we just tensor together the qubits on the support Si of phi i, and uh, we demand that this is zero. And of course, I mean, this is equivalent again to h times Psi is zero. And so now we can, efficiently represent a product state. This is, yeah, because uh, this is just a qubit. So we have n qubits that can be efficiently represented, but uh, due to accuracy concerns, we actually get an epsilon prod start here. So here we just ask that uh, the uh, absolute value of this expression is bounded by some small epsilon. And uh, now this is easy to check, of course. And uh, now we can also ask the question, when actually do we know that there exists a product solution? So uh, the criteria here, we first need to look at our system as a graph, or a hypergraph, rather. So uh, the qubits and constraints form a hypergraph, and uh, the vertices are the qubits. So here we have uh, four qubits, and the, the constraints form hyper edges. So each um, edge here, so, so for example, this is a three local uh, constraint, and then this forms the hyper edge W, X, Y. And uh, so we can also have uh, edges of different sizes. So here just a two local constraint forms the edge X, Z. And we can add another three local constraint. And we can also have duplicate constraints to implement uh, higher uh, rank projectors. So here we can have a two uh, rank projector on this uh, set of three qubits. And uh, we say that the graph G has an SDR, a system of distinct representatives. If there exists an injective map F from the edges to the vertices, such that each edge is mapped to a vertex that is part of the edge. Uh, so for example, uh, so what, this here is an example of uh, an SDR. So you map this uh, outer edge to W, the inner edge to X, the red edge here to Z, and the blue edge to Y. And uh, so a theorem by Laumann and others says, if H has an SDR, then H has a product solution. And uh, a generic instance H without an SDR has no product solution. And uh, for a generic instance, you can think like, okay, so we fix this uh, hypergraph layout. And then for each constraint, we just pick a random uh, rank one projector. And uh, the probability that this is, uh, has a product solution is then, uh, if it does not have an SDR, then the probability that it has a product solution is zero. So effectively, like for almost all uh, sets of constraints, we have no product solution here. I mean, here we always have a product solution, but if we would add one more edge, we would not get product solutions. And uh, so one uh, side note is that the solution is actually uh, very easy to compute if we have uh, product constraints. So for example, like for WX, X, Y, we put the constraint one, one, zero. And uh, so we have matched to this uh, edge W, X, Y, the uh, vertex W, 
And so we just set W uh, to zero, and here we have W equals one. Uh, yeah, so here we have a one on W, and then uh, these two expressions are orthogonal. So we get zero here, and we do the same with all the others, and then uh, we can easily compute a satisfying assignment. But if we have um, uh, entangled constraints, then this is not easy at all. And this is sort of, in, in this work, we're sort of trying to understand the complexity of uh, coming up with these solutions, which we are promised to exist by this theorem here. And so like a more, a more complicated example for which you don't know how to compute the solution is this one, which you call the full cycle. And uh, we also know this always has perfect solutions because it's easy to see it has an SDR. So you can just, I mean, we have the same number of edges and vertices. And like, for example, you can have this uh, edge to this vertex, this edge to this vertex, and then just go around the cycle. And okay, so as I said, so what is the complexity of computing a product solution of a QSAT instrument with SDR? And a more abstract version of this question is what is the complexity of problems with a guaranteed and efficiently verifiable but hard to find solution? And uh, so this complexity class is called TFMP, total function MP. And we say a relation, so it's not a language problem anymore, but a relation because now we're finding a solution. So it's like the relation associates the valid output with an input. And uh, we say a relation is in TFMP if it can be efficiently verified. And for every X, there exists a Y such that uh, the relation holds. And so the most famous instance is probably the PPID, uh, also the end of line problem. And there we are given a succinct description of an exponential size graph G. And uh, by way of description, it's ensured that the degree is at most two. And we also given access to a node that has degree equals one. And then we want to find another uh, vertex V that's uh, different that has degree uh, also one. And now, because this graph has a most degree two, so it's just a, a collection of lines, there must exist such a vertex. Uh, but I mean, of course, like the path can be exponentially long, so we don't know it's efficiently computed. And so this is a, like, I mean, this is a super weird definition of a problem, but I mean, it has very natural complete problems, such as computing uh, a Brouwer fixed point of a function or computing a Nash equilibrium. And uh, yeah, also our problem QSET with SDRs and TFMP because uh, the product solution we can efficiently verify. And so a little bit more about TFMP. So uh, TFMP also forms a hierarchy. So we have TFMP on, on top and then like CLS at the bottom. And then uh, these all follow from sort of mathematical principles. So PPA is handshaking amount graphs. Uh, it's not super important if you don't know this, just like a quick overview. Uh, PPP is the pigeonhole principle. Uh, PLS is searching for a local optimum. Uh, PPID is the end of line problem. CLS is gradient descent. And uh, here it has actually been shown. And this was a uh, recent result. And it was uh, very difficult uh, that uh, the intersection of like uh, finding a local optimum and uh, following the end of a line is actually a gradient descent, which sort of intuitively makes sense. Okay, so now let me go over our results. Uh, so the first one is we extend the theorem by Laman and R now to Q dits. So uh, for this, look at this instance here. So we have two qubits, uh, Q trit, and uh, four different uh, constraints. Uh, three of them are two uh, local, and one of them is three local. And again, we can make a hypergraph of these constraints, as I missed before. Now we have a different uh, notion. This is a WSDR. Yeah? Again, it's the map from edges to vertices. It maps each uh, edge to a vertex inside the edge. And what we also demand is that for all vertices, that uh, the pre-image here is at most size di minus one. So this means uh, for a Q bit, we can only map one edge to it. So just the same as a SDR. But for a Q trit, so we have d equals three, we can map two edges to it. And so then uh, the same version now, just generalize if h has a WSDR, then h has a product solution. And a generic instant h, uh, without a WSDR has no product solution. And so as a side note, so, so where Bezu's number comes in, so there's sort of a version of the Bezu number, which uh, counts the solutions of such a system. And the number of solutions is then equal to the different numbers of weighted SDRs you can pick. And so, so one uh, easy corollary, which uh, reproves the known result by Pathasarasi, is uh, if we have some subspace V of uh, tensor photographic spaces, 
uh, is uh, completely entangled. So then it contains no product solutions across any cuts of this uh, case basis. Then we can upper bound the dimension by this expression here. And uh, this is now super easy to prove. Uh, so each Q did represents one of these Hilbert spaces. And the dimension is chosen to be the same as the HI. And then we introduce one global constraint for each state in a basis of the orthogonal complement of V. And now WSDR is easy to see that it exists if and only if the dimension of this orthogonal complement is at most this. And this is just because for each Q to DI, we can assign DI minus one constraints to the Q to in the WSDR. And so now our new subclass uh, will be uh, MHS as a set of relations that can be polytime reduced to computing approximate solutions to systems of multi homogeneous equations. I, and this is only for, for the definition of the results. I later define in more detail what a multi homogeneous equation is. And uh, the solution should be guaranteed by the multi homogeneous Bezu theorem. And so what we show is that quantum set with SDR is MHS complete. And uh, so, so it's known that set with SDR is polytime solvable. So this is sort of what I showed in the beginning where you had the product constraints. And what we also have is Q set with SDR and just one extra clause is MP complete, was also shown by GERD. And uh, set with SDR, we can actually show, and this is, a, I mean, it's not very difficult at all, but I don't think it's anywhere in the literature, is if we have set with an SDR and we add a constant number of extra clauses and it remains polytime solvable. And uh, what we can also do is uh, to show the, the hardness results of, of like some of our NP hardness results, we can embed a sparse polynomial into the system. So we're given a sparse polynomial. So this has N non-zero coefficients, but the degree can now be exponential in N. We can construct a quantum set instance with an SDR, such that we can map from product solutions to roots of the polynomial. And so this is a parsimonious reduction. And uh, so this gives us a scholarly recover the result of GERD. So deciding whether prot set with SDR has a real solution is NP hard, just because deciding whether a sparse polynomial has a real root is NP hard. And then we also get, so if we look at a single qubit and want to see is there a product solution where this single qubit has for both coordinates the same absolute value, and this is also NP hard. It's a result from a place that I think, which is based on. Okay, so, so the last part we were looking at is efficiently solvable special cases. And uh, these special cases are characterized by the transfer filtration. So uh, again, we have our hypergraph of constraints and the transfer filtration is just an ordering of the edges and the so-called core. So this is like our ordering, like these three edges, one, two, three, and the core on these two vertices, uh, such that uh, no edge is fully contained in the core. And each edge adds at most one extra vertex to the set of the core and the previous edges. So you can see that now uh, we say that an edge is extending if it actually adds an extra vertex. And here, these three edges all add an extra vertex. Uh, but yeah, so we can also have non-extending edges. So that would look like this and another one. And uh, so for such a system, one can also define the notion of a radius, which roughly is like how many layers would it take if we add the edges layer by layer while uh, respecting this condition here. So if we can't count the edges from the current layer, then one still to preserve this condition, how many uh, layers does it take? And um, yeah, so what the special case that's uh, efficiently solvable is if we have one extending edge and then uh, also have logarithmic radius, and we can compute uh, approximate solutions in polynomial time. And uh, so the only difference to the prior uh, algorithm is that this one works uh, for any instance, so there's no, no, no generosity assumption. So that was Baldi, the border of Caribbean, and uh, Saidi. And yeah, so we can also extend it, if we have KQ set, we can support K minus one non-extending edges, but then we also need the generosity assumptions again. And yeah, so the runtime is also then exponentially okay. And now let me uh, go to the multi homogeneous setting. Uh, so, what is a multi homogeneous equation? So, this definition is from Morgan and Sumis. And so, we say a uh, polynomial F is multi homogeneous if we can uh, partition the variables into M sets, uh, which we call that J, and that J is that 0J to that NJJ, and uh, degrees 
such an app is homogeneous in the J of degree DJ. So this is an example. So, okay, so we have uh, two variable groups here, the blue ones, the red ones, the ones are two. And so F is, uh, has a homogeneity degree one uh, in zero. So if you view the blue ones as constants, then you can see F is linear. And if you view the red ones as constants, F is uh, quadratic. And so, okay, so the, the relation to quantum status, now we can think of each of these groups as a Q N J plus one end or an element of P and J. So this is the projective space. And effectively, this is a set of non-zero uh, N J plus one dimensional vectors, which are where we uh, equate uh, vectors that have the same global phase, uh, up to global phase. So then effectively N J is the degrees of freedom in such a variable group because uh, I mean, for a homogeneous polynomial, we uh, can always disregard the global phase. And so then uh, one can define the multi-homogeneous Bezu number. Uh, so like now we have given like n equations, and this is n needs to be the same as the total number of degrees of freedom. And uh, then we can define the Bezu number as the coefficient of this expression here. So we just put the n into the exponent, and this alphas are symbolic variables representing the zj. This is a symbolic product. The alphas have no further meaning. And then we put the degrees in here. And so, I mean, I'll show it in an example. It's a bit complicated. But yeah, what we know is that uh, it has D Bizu solutions. So for a generic instance, it will have exactly these solutions, uh, counting multiplicities. Uh, and uh, for a concrete instance, uh, there's always at least D Bizu solutions. And if there's not, then we have infinite solutions. And so an example is this. So we have three equations, uh, two variable groups, and uh, these are the degrees. And then we construct this symbolic polynomial. So we put uh, one here, two here. Uh, so you just take these degrees, put it into this expression, then you multiply it out. And then this is, so we have alpha one to the one, alpha two to the two, because of one and two uh, here. And then we know we have six solutions. And what we can observe is that, um, that if we have a multi homogeneous system, uh, the degree, degrees are all either zero or one, and this is exactly equivalent to pod set. So there's no, no reduction or anything, it's just equivalent. And the Bizu number is, uh, can be shown to be the number of weighted SCRs. And note that, uh, so checking if the Bizu number is zero or not is easy. So it's not just uh, finding a match effectively, but uh, computing this is uh, hard. I think it should be hard uh, because then we have to like, count all these numbers for solution and it can be an exponential number of these. And yeah, so, so now again, what is our T of MP class? So we define MHS, the set of relations that can be polytime reduced to finding an epsilon approximate solution to a multi-homogeneous system for a positive Bezu number. And here we restrict ourselves to constant group size and constant total degree in each polynomial. So it's also quite restrictive, but uh, was needed for a reduction. And what we show is that pot set with SDR is MHS complete. And so, so the only part missing, because like if we, the degrees are zero or one, we already have pot sets. So what is missing is how do we get the degree uh, greater than one? And yes, yeah, so, so we can put it now into the MHS hierarchy, but unfortunately we don't know the relationships of MHS to the other classes here. And that would be super interesting to find more about it. And yeah, so, uh, so now let's assume we have qubits. Okay, so, so then we have uh, this constraint here. We have these two variable groups. And so we represent x0, x1 as a qubit, x and y0, y1 as two qubits. So we need two qubits to get the higher degree. And now we need one y and y prime to be equal. So we do this with a projector onto the anti-symmetric subspace uh, to ensure equality. And this is effectively just a swap test. So what we have is that the anti-symmetric subspace on two qubits is actually just a rank one. So we can just do it with a senior constraint. And yeah, so, so then we can embed F like this. So basically you take, you have, see zero, zero, one here, that goes to here and uh, one, one, one goes to one, one, one here. And so, so this process just adds uh, one variable group, a qubit and one equation or constraint. So the Bezu number remains positive, but it increases. And so, so the, the issue is now, okay, this only works on qubits because otherwise the anti-symmetric subspace is just too big. So that then uh, if we would, I mean, we can still add the projectors, but then we lose the Bezu number. Uh, or the Bezu number becomes zero, yes. 
And yeah, so, so the way this generator is supposed to work is we have uh, this reaction here. So we take uh, one QD plus one it, and we embed it into a qubit and a qdit. So if we have uh, H as a qset instance on this uh, Hilbert space here with a WSDR, then we can compute an H prime on this Hilbert space here. So we go from D plus one to two and D. Uh, and a mapping of product solutions uh, can be efficiently done between H prime and H. And yeah, so, so yeah, skip over this. And yeah, so, so the way this uh, then basically works is we have uh, our Qtrit here and we want to turn it into two qubits. And this increases locality of the edges. This is also why this uh, only supports really uh, a constant or maybe a logarithmic number or, uh, of uh, degree, a uh, logarithmic degree at most, because uh, uh, then later the, the constraints just become too large to efficiently represent. And yeah, so these other edges here, like the blue edge is not touched by this at all. And yeah, so, so if you do equality projectors, you just add the projector to the anti-symmetric subspace. And for the SDI, you can just map them onto uh, the, the newly created qubit. And yeah, so I think this one we can so skip. And let's go to the conclusion. And so what we've shown is we have a quantum problem that uh, guarantees a simple or classical solution, uh, but it is also uh, likely intractable. So either a quantum set with WSDR can be solved efficiently, or MHS completeness is a strong indicator for intractability. And uh, so what we're interested in is, are there more complete problems for MHS? Uh, where does MHS actually lie in the TFMP hierarchy? Can we show any connections to the existing classes? And yeah, also another idea would be whether they, uh, so sort of a no-go result, whether we can find uh, FPT algorithms for quantum set with a WSDR. So like, like we fix some uh, parameter uh, and then we have uh, algorithm. All right, uh, sorry that the paper is not online yet, uh, but yeah, if you're interested, you can email me and then I can send you the current draft. It should be online very soon, but there was some uh, stuff still left to fix. And yeah, so sorry about that. And uh, yes, thank you for listening. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so uh, could you explain again the meaning of title? So you mean the un unholy trinity, so what, what does it mean? What does, what does it finally mean? Oh, uh, I mean, it's just, it's just like we have a combination of, of three different, very different seeming concepts. So we have TFMP, which is a, a classical complexity class, which has been around for a long time. And then we have like a ma mathematical result, uh, just from algebraic geometry. And we also, uh, have the, our quantum aspect, the quantum satisfiability problem. And so here we sort of uh, combine all these three very different concepts into uh, hopefully one sort of cohesive story. Okay, thank you. Okay, so any other questions or comments? Okay, so if not, so let's, Rudolf, uh, let's, let's thank, thank the speaker again. Thanks.